Welcome to Onset's webinar, Reducing Energy Demand Charges, Three Critical Steps. This webinar will be presented by Bruce Schaefer, President of Action Energy. Action Energy is an energy services company that specializes in a comprehensive approach to energy reduction. In this webinar, we will discuss energy demand charges. What is energy demand? Why and how are energy demand charges being implemented? And how you can reduce your facility's energy demand. Next, we will discuss an overview of data loggers, who uses data loggers, a three-step process to reducing energy demand, and the largest energy consumers within a facility. Then, we will explain the factors to consider for air handling unit efficiency. Finally, we will discuss how to plan your data logger projects deployment considerations, and selection criteria. And now, I will turn the webinar over to Bruce Schaefer. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you, Jennifer. Again, my name is Bruce Schaefer. I'm with Action Energy, and we're an energy services company out of Fall River, Massachusetts. Today, we want to talk about energy demand charges. What is energy demand? Why and how are energy demand charges being implemented? And how can you reduce your facility's energy demand? What is energy demand? We're going to break down a monthly electric bill and take a look at the different facets of it. First, you have the basic customer charges. Those are administrative fees. They're fixed fees, typically between $100 to $500, depending on the size of your account. And they can also range uh, much higher for uh, much larger accounts. Energy used. This is the actual amount of electricity used by your, your, it, during your billing period, and that is measured in kilowatt hours. And then there's demand. This typically applies to commercial and industrial power consumers. And it, it, what this is is the amount of electricity consumed during a peak demand period based on a 15-minute window, or a 15-average minute window, depending on where you're at in the country. And that's measured in kilowatts. If you look at the graph, facilities A peak energy demand is much greater than facility B's peak. The interesting part here is you could have actually a higher demand charge than the other facility, A could be higher than B, but still have the same KWH or usage. So here we want to look at how can we reduce these peaks and make a difference on your electric bill. Why are energy demand charges being implemented? Well, suppliers must meet the customer's maximum electricity demands. They must have the infrastructure to handle the peak that is being delivered or uh, demanded by their customer base. So the suppliers must cover the cost of power generation, lines, towers, and other infrastructure costs. How are these demand charges being implemented? Well, obviously through your bill, these charges apply to your commercial and industrial customers of electricity, and the amount of electricity consumed during the peak demand period, which is again based on that 15-minute window. We have an example of the highest peak during a month in electricity demand. For instance, if a factory is uh, 250 kW, the demand charge would be 250 times, in this case we're talking about Boston area, which is about $20 per kW then the factory will pay $5,000 a month in demand charges, even if that is only for a 15-minute period during that month. That demand charge will be $5,000. Offsetting rising demand charges. The chart you see in front of you shows an example of before you do anything with coincidental use, meaning not paying attention to equipment coming on and coming off at the same time. And then the reduced usage uh, graph shows that after you make sure things aren't coming on and off, how we can reduce that demand. Offsetting rising demand charges. You should have a clear understanding of the energy demands of all your machinery. That includes from chillers to air handling units, pumps, fans. Anything that consumes large amounts of electricity, especially in your facility. Know when the electricity usage is highest. What time of day does that happen? Um, make changes and updates or scheduling adjustments. 
systems. A lot of times if you have energy management systems in your uh, building, pay attention to when the equipment is scheduled on and off and make sure that you're turning it on and off during high demand peak times, typical high demand peak times, normally around 2 in the afternoon on a summer hot day. That's a good time to look. Consider using portable data loggers to monitor energy usage of equipment and systems. Data loggers. One of the easy ways of finding these, the energy usage of equipment is deploying data loggers to measure the actual usage, number one usage, NKW, of a piece of equipment. This is a low cost means, it's easy to use. We use them all the time in commercial buildings and industrial applications. Um, nice thing is they do run 24-7 unattended, indoor, outdoor, and uh, used in specific intervals. And the data can be downloaded to a PC or a Mac for analysis. There's a wide range of measurements that you can do. You see a list here. For demand, we're very much interested in KW. But for usage, you want to know what your KWH is. Sometimes it's DC voltage, AC voltage, temperature, uh, whether your lights are on or off, uh, motors, and even get into relative humidity if you're looking at dual empathy controls, uh, light intensity and differential pressure, especially in uh, HVAC systems when we're doing monitoring of those. For outdoor applications, you can use loggers to uh, look at solar radiation, wind speed and direction, and rainfall if you want to get into those types of measurements as well. Who uses data loggers? Well, we use data loggers. Energy auditors, facility managers, performance contractors, anybody that really needs to understand how a facility is functioning and how the major pieces of equipment are consuming energy at what time and uh, to what extent that equipment is consuming energy. Uh, you can use a data logger to really help you understand your facility and map out a plan of action based on that information. When we employ data loggers, we use a three-step process. First, we want to measure the efficiency of your system and equipment. We call this the base case. Determine what your energy consumption for your piece of equipment is. Then from that information, we want to modify the equipment and um, correct the issues and the problems. So this modification um, could be from changing as simple as belts, but it could be filters, it could be all kinds of different things depending on what piece of equipment we're looking at. And then we want to verify the equipment's efficiency after we've made the modifications. Is it really doing what it's supposed to do? Very important, because many times that gets overlooked, and if you don't make sure it's working correctly, you still have the same issues going forward. Before we get into the three-step process, one of the things you should do is determine what are the largest energy consumers in your facility. Boilers, chillers, air handling units, pumps, these are pieces of equipment that consume pretty much the largest single, well, they are the largest single consumers in the facility. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about air handling units. Air handling units um, are typically forgotten in the facility. They're